So this is a fairly simple process. It's not too complicated. I think the hardest part is actually just finding the ROM to do this. But um, all you got to do is head over here. I'll leave these links in the description. You're going to see some SHA-1 strings here. You're only going to need, I believe, PAL GC debug and PAL MQ debug. These are the two that I use. You could also use these. Uh, the way to get these, you can just dump them from your cartridge or Wii Virtual Console, I believe, also works here. But uh, these, you can also put them somewhere and uh, you should find results very quickly for uh, those specific ROMs. You can use this website to also just test your ROMs to make sure they work, that they will work. So this is the Master Quest ROM. So it'll be highlighted green and it'll tell me it is this ROM. Same deal with the regular ROM. You can just do this and it'll highlight it. So once you have those, you will come here and this is the release page for the Ship of Arkinian port. And you'll want to download the one that a lot that you want for your system. So I'm doing the Windows one. You could do the Switch one, but if you want to do the Switch one, you're also going to need to make an OTR file which I believe is only generated from the Windows and the Linux versions. And I'm not sure about the Mac one. But I already have all these downloaded, so I'm just going to grab this. This is the main game folder. I'm just going to set up a fresh folder for the game because I already have it right here set up. It's all set up. I got my mods and things installed. But we're going to start fresh just to show you what it looks like when you first do it. So all you got to do is drag these in here. Give that a moment to load. And we're going to go into the downloads folder where we had our ROMs. And we're just going to copy those in here. And then we're going to run the soh.exe. And it's going to say no OTR files found generate right, one now. And you're going to click yes. But it should find your ROM automatically. Just click yes. If it doesn't, uh, it'll come up with a window that says, would you like to find a ROM or something like that? Just click yes and then locate the ROM wherever it is on your computer, and it'll work exactly the same. If you put them in the folder, though, it finds them automatically. So it's going to ask you if you want to extract another, and if you have the Master Quest, you are going to want to do this, or else you won't be able to play the Master Quest. Just click Yes again. And the game should just open. So we could just start playing and we could just set up our settings. I'm going to show you how to also install texture packs and model replacements. We're just going to close this out for now. You're going to see we have a mods folder now. So it's going to tell you custom OTR files go here. OTR files are the mod format for this port. So we're going to install two mods today. It's going to be the 3DS, uh, 3DS experience pack. This just makes the textures and the models look more like the 3DS version of the game. And we're going to replace Link with his melee models. And I'm only going to grab the Link models for this one because these are still work in progress and I believe they're unfinished. So we've already got everything I'm going to need here. So this is the texture pack right here. You're going to just want to pretty much drag everything in except the link texture OTR. You want the without link version if you are going to install custom models. If you're going to use the models that just come with the game, then use the link texture and uncheck this one. Uh, you could also exclude the Crescent Moon add-on if you don't want that. That just restores the mirror shield to the old uh, moon texture that it used to have back in 1.0 of the game. We're just going to drag these in here. And they should just pop up in there. And if we launch the EXE again, you're going to notice that it doesn't load. It looks like nothing worked correctly. That's because you need to enable custom asset support. So we're going to press F1 on the keyboard. Go over to graphics right here. Mods. Use alternate assets. You're going to notice right away that the textures change. And the texture pack is working. So we know that's good. So we're going to close that out. We're going to go back and install the link models now. And this is also the same thing. You're going to see some mods might have their textures uh, as a separate OTR. That's fine. Just select them like that. And drag them in there. 
and it should just work once we launch the exe and i'm going to enable debug mode right here in the developer tools and we're going to go into debug mode so i can just quickly load into different areas of the game so i believe we have to make a thing so yeah this is how if you have master quest you're going to notice that when you make a new file now you're going to be able to select between base game and master quest as well as randomizer and a boss rush mode so we're just going to do a regular game we'll call it call him bubby all right we got bubby the hero of time so now we got this debug map select screen that i can use to just do different things so we're going to just head into uh let's go into hyrule field as adult link you're going to tell right away that it does work and the models are loaded and everything, but it's still running at 30 FPS and it feels very choppy. What we're going to do is turn on some enhancements. So what you could do is go into presets here and just enable like enhanced or something and click apply. So there might not be a difference right away because that just enables things like 3D dropped items or a wallet. You might have noticed the wallet icon changed to represent what wallet I have in the game. You're going to notice also the show dungeon entrances thing is not going to be in the top left anymore because uh, that's usually on when you got the debug mode loaded up. But let's say you want to unlock the frame rate. So it's going to be under graphics, I believe, right here. Yep. So right now it's set to 20. So let's bump that up. Let's put that to, let's put that to like 60 FPS. And you're going to notice it's running at 60 FPS. So now you may have seen me also use things like free cam and stuff like that. That can also be switched on just by going into controller mapping. You're going to want to rebind your controls. I'm going to put a thing on the screen that shows you what you should bind your buttons to. And the C buttons are all going to be bound to uh, keys on the controller. So I've set that all up. I even got gyro work in here. I'm using a DualSense controller plugged into the USB port of my computer. So now when I go into first person, oh, I have to turn that on still. Uh, with the bow, yeah. I've got gyro control. That works. Free cam is still not toggled on because I need to turn it on. So once we head into additional controller options, I believe. Yeah, you can tweak stuff here, just like D-pad controls for the ocarina. Uh, camera controls. Uh, here we go. Third person camera, free camera. And let's just make sure all that other stuff is all good. Yep. Okay. So now when I move... Uh, the controller around here so you have free cam but it's pretty slow i don't like how slow it is so all you gotta do is head back in here there should be a camera speed option somewhere the tra i don't know if it's transition speed i believe it's the sensitivity that you just bump up yeah just bump this up and you should be good so let's put that to 250 i think that's a sweet spot for me on both and there we go and the controllers may be inverted. All you got to do is click that. There you go. Free cam's working. Link's swinging. His items all work. Gyro works. So let's just go through some other options real quick just to show you what else you could do here. You can bump up the resolution if you want. Make it render at 200% more than your current resolution. Crank up some M MSAA. Make it look a little smoother in the distance. I don't know if it'll show up on the video, but uh, the tree does look a little nicer when you crank that up but it is very performance heavy uh, if you also notice a stuttering thing when you rotate the camera it's not currently happening because i have the judder fix on but some pcs may experience stuttering when they move the camera all you got to do is set this judder fix to the frame rate that you are currently at and it should fix that let's see what else we got here got things like v-sync which i'm not going to use since i'm using free sync already uh, audio, you can just change your settings here. Then you can do things like time savers to make things go faster, like tech speed or King Zora, he'll move faster. Or the big Goron sword forge time, you can set that so you don't have to wait at all and just get it. Uh, vine and ladder climb speed, that's pretty obvious what that does. Same with the block pushing speed. And yep, yeah, you can set link as the default file name if that's what you do every time, but I like Bubby. So we're gonna we're gonna keep that off. Uh, all these are pretty obvious in what they do. If you hover over them, they also just tell you what they do right away. 
So I think I'm just going to leave it on the enhanced preset. That's pretty much what I play with. And then I turn on some things like disabling LODs and draw distance. Uh, some computers might not run well with these on, so I would just turn these off if you're getting performance issues. And turn off the black bars for like uh, for pressing Z or in cutscenes. I like having them on, so we're gonna leave that. For speedrunners, there is a glitch lineup tick that you can turn on here. That'll help you line up your tricks. There's an N64 mode that will lower the resolution and aspect ratio to the original. There's also this 3D dropped items, and I should probably show you what that actually looks like. So, let's just turn that off for a second. Let's run over here and cut some bushes. Once I figure out the sword button. There we go. So you're going to see they're just textures right now. If I turn this on, they now become full 3D models. And it's very nice to look at because they are using the, the 3DS models from the texture pack. So you got some fixes here as well that can also fix bugs. Uh, most of these should be should be fine just with the enhanced preset, but if you want anything extra, you can just turn it on. I haven't looked much into the extra modes. I've never really used them, but it looks like there's things like mirroring the map or randomizing the enemies or the enemy sizes. There's Ivan the Fairy, which is a co-op mode, which I've also never tried. But I believe you can just hook up a second controller and have someone run around with you. There's these other things, but I don't use any of these. There is also an autosave that you can have trigger every time you walk into a new area or get an item. You can have it just autosave every time you pick up an item. I'm going to just leave it at new location and major item. There's also a cosmetics editor here. Uh, you're able to change all the colors. I'm not sure if they change with this texture pack, but you can change Link's tunic just by hitting randomize or you can click on the little color here. And just set it to whatever you want. So let's just keep them. Let's just keep them like that. And it looks nice and blue. And let's see. We got hearts here. Let's see if they do change. Yeah, the texture pack does support changing the colors on the hearts. It still works. That's awesome. So if you make a change and you don't want it, you can just hit reset. There you go. It's also next to the specific option if you don't want to reset the whole category. But it looks like you can change the colors for pretty much everything uh link body skill what is it? oh my god <laughs> i did not know this was even here i've never went through the these things in the cosmetics editor man you can have like giant link give him a big head <laughs> yeah i mean that's awesome you get the sword scale and they have a bigger sword oh man i didn't even know this was here <laughs> And there's things like changing the HUD buttons and stuff. You can change the HUD positioning too. I like to just leave it like this, but I've seen configs where people try to make it look more modern. But yeah, you can pretty much tweak everything here. You can set a GameCube color scheme if you want, and we'll change the A and B buttons to the GameCube. Let's see what else we've got. So there's cheats here too, the whole cheats menu. You can screw around. Change age. Well, it's just going to reload the area. Got a beta quest. Your cutscene pointer. Got Deku sticks. Got all these funny bugs. Easy ISG. That just turns on infinite sword glitch. And we got moon jump. I like using this one when I'm... Oh, it looks like Big Head Link does not like moon jumping. Okay. No moon jumping for Big Link. But, uh, let's see what else we got here. Some fixes, restoration stuff. Authentic logo screen will replace the little spinning logo at the beginning that's normally like lib build a ship it'll actually just say nintendo 64 again so i'm gonna do that because i like having that and what else have we got this looks like it restores a bug from yep this restores a bug from 1.0 that lets you kill bongo bongo in the intro cutscene things like crowd control so i believe that's a twitch thing where viewers can uh, send bits to trigger effects in the game. I'm not sure how to set that up. Uh, we also got an audio editor here I did not go through. So you can download things like a... Uh, there's like song packs, I believe. I'll have one linked in the description. I believe it is installed just as these texture packs are. It's just an OTR that goes into the mods folder. And it'll add music to your game. 
I would showcase it, but I believe there is copyrighted music in there, and I would rather not have that in the video. But you can turn stuff off like proximity music or music to help you in the Lost Woods. Okay. Let's see what else we got. got some accessibility stuff like text to speech. Recentering the camera, I might. Yeah, let's turn that on. You can change the scale of this menu. Make it easier on the eyes. Change the render API. I think DirectX is fine. Three point is the original N64 texture filtering, so I would just leave it at that. You can translate the title screen. You can set it to German, French. Uh, some texture packs, I believe, might not support the other languages. You could also control this menu with your controller, but I just like using the mouse. Show inputs will make it so... Well, if I had the scale set properly, they would show up at the bottom there. It would show you what buttons I'm pressing. Oh, there we go. But with debug mode on, you can also see them. That's what those little uh, those dots are right there. It seems that one's cut off right there, but that's fine. I don't normally use it. Now, I did forget two options. I'm adding this in just after recording because I just realized I missed them and they probably will pop up for people. This is my personal uh, copy that I had in the other folder in the beginning of the video, but I want you to head over to mods here. And this is only if you are using the 3DS assets. If you're not, don't worry about this. Check this disable grotto fixed rotation, because if you don't, the grottos will spin with you while you uh, look at them. That's because originally the game used just a flat texture and the grotto would follow the camera. But this 3DS pack replaces them with full 3D model like uh, entrances. So you don't need that anymore. So just make sure that's checked if you're using the 3DS pack. Another thing you want to uncheck is fix out of bound textures. If you do not uncheck this or make sure it's disabled, uh, your game will crash when you pull out the Deku stick. I've noticed this is an issue that I've had left in the comments sometimes. I just wanted to point it out in case it's still a bug. But I've just had it off. I haven't seen any issues. You shouldn't really notice anything with that setting anyway when you're playing the game normally. It just fixes things when you're in like debug maps. But yeah, I just wanted to add that in because I feel like that was a very important thing to include. And yeah, there's just a ton of different things you can tweak here. This is probably the best way to play this game, in my opinion. I don't think any official version is will get anywhere near this. And it's just, it's awesome to see this game. <laughs> it's, it's, it's awesome to, to see Link look like the, <laughs> this. But no, it's, it's awesome to be able to play this game on a PC with all these enhancements. And not have to wait for like a... Ocarina of Time HD collection from Nintendo or something and have to drop like 70 bucks on it. It's like, no, if I, I own the game, I can just dump the ROM and play it on PC with all these cool features. So now I'm going to show you how to set this up on the Switch. It's actually very easy. All you're going to need are these two OTR files from your PC version. And I'm now going to hop over to my Switch and show you how that's done. Okay, so I've got my switch here on the right side. And just a note before we start that you are going to need a modded switch to play this. So once you, if you have a modded switch, you're all good to go. What we're gonna need right here is you're gonna see the switch zip file. We're just gonna download that and put it there. Pop it open and you're going to see it's just an NRO and an OTR, and a readme file. So when you open the readme, it's going to give you the same instructions basically on the website. But for the Switch version, it's going to tell you how and where to install your uh, files for this. So we're not going to need that. We got the video here. So you just got these two files. So you're wondering, how do I get them onto my Switch? Well, there's multiple ways to do it. The first way to do it is via the reboot, like when you reboot your system and go into uh, the Henkate menu, you can use USB tools to 
plug your switch into your PC from a USB-C cable and it'll just act as like a hard drive. There's also this USB file transfer tool you can use, which does pretty much the same thing. But my method is using DBI right here. So I'll leave a link for this in the description. You just launch DBI, but uh, you should probably launch it from full RAM. So if you hold R on your controller, I'm using a pro controller, just launch any game. I'm gonna launch Mario Wonder here. You're gonna see DBI. You know, open it's gonna have a black background so it's got a black background that means it's got full ram access if it's got a blue background it has limited ram access so in dbi what you're going to want to do is run the mtp responder it's going to ask you to plug your console into a pc so i'm going to run over to my dock and grab my switch see that the signal goes out here on the right that's fine we're not going to need to look at the switch for now I'm going to Plug this right into my PC with a USB-C cable. It's going to do some loading, and your switch is going to pop up on the screen right here. So we're just going to say goodbye to that for a second. And you're going to see, we're going to go here into your SD card. You're going to go into switch. You're going to see I already have an SOH folder here. So we're going to do this as if it was new. So let's just make a new folder. Let's... uh. Well, let's just call it let's call it bubby again so what you're not going to name it bubby you're you're, you're going to name it soh but just as an example for a fresh install i'm going to name it bubby we're going to take the switch install and you're just going to drag these two files in here well i need to extract them first yeah let's go here do a quick extract with seven zip let's just extract them here because it's fine and we'll take these and cut them in here It'll move to switch bubby. Okay. Now what you want to do is go back to your ship of Harkinian game folder from the Windows install. And you're going to want to grab OOT.OTR and OOT-MasterQuest.OTR. You want to copy them in here. And that's it. That's all you got to do. That's all you have to do and it'll just work. So we're going to, going to actually copy these as well into my actual ship install because I believe I have an outdated version. I'm just going to do that. Copy and replace. And I'm also going to replace. Need to re-extract because I took the files out. Let's just do that. That'll be quicker. I'll do this. Drag these boys in there. Copy and replace. Copy and replace. And that's it. So on your switch, all you got to do is press B to stop the MTP responder. It'll close everything. I'm going to hit exit. And I'm going to redock my switch. And black box reappear. Pop this back in there. Come back. There's our switch up and running again. So we got to do, we're going we're gonna to launch Wonder, but secretly it's the homebrew menu. We're going to come over to the end. You're going to see two ship of our Kenyans because I made a bubby folder. <laughs> But it's you're only gonna see one normally when you install it. All you gotta do is hit A. So we got the switch port booted up. Just gonna go. No, and I got a bubby file already pre-made. I did some behind the scenes uh, tweaking just to get some things working properly. Uh, I had to use the touch screen actually on the switch to configure it because it would not work with my Pro controller. But it seems to play just the same as the PC port besides the controller issue. I may have just missed something. If I did, please let me know. But I normally don't play this on the Switch. I just play it on the uh, on the PC. But yeah. So this is the game. It just looks like regular Ocarina because I haven't turned anything on for it. The FPS is still locked to 20. I believe it's even kind of dropping lower than that. That might just be the Elgato recording. I'm not sure, but... Yeah, so it does work on Switch. You don't need to use the Switch Online app or anything. Just play it like this. If you got a hacked Switch, this is the best way to do it on the Switch. I would not use the Nintendo Switch Online version. I would play this version instead. But yeah, so that's how you get it set up on the PC and on the Switch. If this helped you, be sure to leave a like. You know, share it with your friends if they want to play this. I want everyone playing this game. I need everyone to experience this game at least 
once in their lifetime. This is an amazing game. I'm very biased because I grew up with it, but that's, you know, that's how it is. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully I helped you out. Peace.